So I wanted to do a video and specifically around power balancing your props. What we have in front of us is a 240 pixel Boscoyo Mega Spinner. It's running at 75% off a single output with no power injection at the moment. Uh, everything seems to be working fine. Um, they're between the last pixel here and the first pixel here, there's definitely a noticeable difference in brightness um, to be expected with this many pixels. And even more surprisingly, if you can see here, when it goes to white, you'll notice it's dropping down to 5.9 volts. I'm honestly surprised that these pixels are even working. They're not flickering, they're not doing anything. So most people would say, it's perfectly fine, leave it alone and just put it out in the display which is conventional wisdom. Um, but there are some ways you can actually help mitigate this and not have this voltage drop at the last pixel like we have here, which causes an indifference between the first pixel and the last pixel on how bright they are. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna make a bunch of changes to this particular spinner. Um, and then I'm gonna walk you through the changes I make and why I make them and then show you the end result and how this can help you in a large uh, element such as this that is condensed to be able to manage your power allowing you to run many many more pixels off a single output uh, assuming that the line coming in can handle it and then also chain off because I know there's a lot of people that don't like power injection um, which is perfectly fine but they still want to be able to run say 240 pixels if not more depending on the prop that you have so I'm gonna go ahead and stop the video here and then I'll come back when I'm done and kind of walk you through it so in the first part of this video, I showed that I'd set up this mega spinner just like most people do. I pushed all the pixels, I connected them all together, and then at the very end, I was running them at 75%, and we had 5.9 volts at the very end of the line, which is to be expected with 240 pixels and no power injection. Since then, I've gone ahead and I've wired in at the very beginning, um, I add power injection to the beginning and to the end for future use if I need it, and then plug it off if I don't. But what I did was I took 16 gauge copper wire, it's two core, and I jumped it to where all of the factory pigtails were out. I cut them all out and then put the wires in, coming in and going out and that continues every 50 pixels all the way around anywhere where there was originally a pigtail. I actually keep these and save them as power injection tees. You can see here, um, just a power injection point and then the pigtails on either end. It's great for like between mini trees if you, you know, you have a, a high density mini tree or if you're chaining props together and you need to add power injection works perfectly. Um, and the net result of all of that, as you saw, the 5.9 volts, if we check now at the very end here, you can see I'm at the end. Turn on my trusty voltmeter here. And I now, at my very lowest point, hit 9.2 volts, ensuring that I have even power across all of the pixels um, making sure that, you know, at the very end, it's not dimming or flickering or anywhere else within the prop. Um, everybody, all of it has equal power. And not only that, it gave it additional ground, which I'll be talking about here in a few minutes. So I've gone ahead and actually hooked up two mega spinners together. The, um, for a total of 480 pixels off the single port. I, the line coming in is 25 feet, and then I have a line from the first mega spinner to the second one. I'm still running at 75%, and you'll notice on the second mega spinner, I have the dreaded flicker all over the place that we all hate. Normal wisdom says, well, you need to add power injection. Okay, well, if that's the true case, that means at the end of the line, I would have no voltage, hypothetically, right? Well, let's take a look. Let me grab my voltmeter here and go ahead and stick you in, stick you in, and hopefully this shows up on the camera. You can see I have 
plenty of power. There's no reason why I should be getting this flicker. And what would power injection do to fix this when I already have power? Well, to answer that simple question, our pixels uh, are based off of two things for data. You've got data coming in, and then you have the ground back to the controller, uh, which is the, the full cycle of that data being pumped in and then going back to be for the full signal. A lot of people would say add an F amp. That would probably work too and fix this particular problem. I could lower the brightness and that might fix this particular problem. But I actually set this up to purposely um, flicker and I wanted to kind of talk about the ground line in particular. People don't realize how important having proper ground is. More ground is more better, as Russell would say. Um, so I'm gonna switch this to the way I should have wired it, not the way it is wired. I actually have the power injection coming in at the end of the line, not where the data is coming in. So I'm losing ground throughout all of this. So I'm actually gonna fix it and put the power injection where it's supposed to be, and then come back and show you the end result. And with that small change and ensuring that I have proper ground for the data, you can see that it's now running exactly as it should. And all of the colors are even, whether it's white, whether it's yellow, I mean, <laughs> red, blue, or green, it all looks good. And there's no fading anywhere. All of the pixels are evenly powered, which allows for that. I can also show um, that how important that ground is by go ahead and grab my voltmeter again. And you can see here, the power levels are exactly the same as they were prior when it was flickering. So power injection really wasn't the problem. It was I just didn't have enough ground. Um, I hope you find that useful. Uh, if you have any questions, let me know. Thanks.